In this next video, I want to talk about sampling the process of recording internal and external audio. Um, external meaning anything you route into your computer, so maybe a turntable or your phone or a microphone, and internal is actually machine's own audio. So you can record different group outputs, different sound outputs, and even the master bus. Um, so to go ahead and get started with this, I'm going to create a new group just to have an empty place to work from. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter into the sampling menu by pressing the sampling button up here at the top. Now once we enter this, we can see we have a lot of different things that we can set up, and this is what we want to do before we actually start recording, and make sure everything is as we want it. Um, so first of all, let's start with source. We have three different options here, external stereo, external mono, and internal. Um, external stereo is going to be a stereo input, so maybe a turntable or your phone. Um, external mono is going to be a mono input, so a microphone like I'm using right now. Um, and internal, like I said, is going to be machine's own audio. And we'll get into that a little bit later. I want to start with external recording. Uh, now the difference between external stereo and external mono, um, if you have a mono input like a microphone and you have it selected on stereo, you can see that it's only on the left channel here. So you're gonna get some weird uh, weird panning issues there. I and mean, then moving it over to mono, we're just going to uh, duplicate it onto the, onto the other stereo field so you have a nice sounding input there, and both in the left and the right. Um, so like I said, if you have a microphone or any mono input, make sure you're on the correct source setting over here. Now once we have this decided on, we can go ahead and move to the input. And this is where you'll select the actual input that you have routed in. So um, I have my microphone on input number one, and I select that one from the input section here. So I'm pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, moving over, we also have mode, and this is going to tell machine when to actually start recording. So having it on detect, it's going to start recording when the audio passes above this threshold. Um, so if you have a sound with a lot of noise floor on it, um, so say a lot of background noise, you can keep this threshold pretty high, so recording won't start until the, uh, until the sound gets loud enough. Um, but if you have a, a pretty clean signal, I'd recommend bringing that down just to make sure that recording actually starts when you want it to. Um, alternatively, uh, you also have sync, and this is going to tie recording into the sequencer playback. Um, this is very helpful for internal, like I said, I'll get into that a little bit later, um, but for external recording, I usually keep it on detect with a low threshold. This is also a good time to talk about the use of an external interface. Um, I really recommend it because it's just going to make your life easier as well as give you options that you wouldn't have otherwise, um, like XLR inputs, phantom power, um, just stuff like that. This is going to make the recording process a lot easier. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of sampling, I really recommend getting an external interface. Now that we have all of our parameters set as we want them and everything's ready to go, we can go ahead and actually start recording. So I have a new pad here, empty pad. I'm just going to press start. And now once I do this, the audio has already passed the threshold because it's the mic that I'm using to narrate this. And um, it's already recording as you can see in the screen. So now it's recording, I'll go ahead and record some snaps. And once I have anything recorded that I want, I can go ahead and press stop. And once I do this, I can see my waveform shows up. Um, here's me just talking and then the snaps are over here. Um, and if I don't like this take and I wanted to uh, another take here, I can just press next. Um, actually, no, I don't have to press that. All I do is just record again. So let's just try again, start, it's already recording. Whatever I want to do, then hit stop. And now you can see this is the new one that I recorded. And now you can uh, you can select between these by using the previous and next buttons over here. So you can sort of have different auditions, um, different takes of the sample. Um, you can select any of these, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to edit these and get them down to whatever you want. So that is the process of recording external audio. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Um, maybe I'll do it once more just to show you it. Um, just go ahead, select a new pad. Um, everything's set as we want it in the recording menu. Press start. It's already recording. Do whatever you want. Hit stop, and then it's going to show up on your pad. And you can go ahead and actually play it. Start. It's already recording. Do it. That's kind of weird because you can hear me, but anyways, um, that's the process of external recording. So now that we're comfortable recording external audio, let's go ahead and talk about recording internal audio. So let's go ahead and change our source over to internal and maybe select a new pad just to make sure we don't overwrite anything. And let's figure out what we want to record here. So um, I want to record my drums and these are on group B. So I'll just go ahead and change this over. And now that I have that set, I'm going to change this mode over to sync. And you can see once I choose this, I also have a length option over here. So um, this is just going to tell machine how long of a sample to record. So you can set it on one bar or two bars, so on and so forth. And if you want just to start recording indefinitely, go ahead and turn it on free. Um, but for now, I'll just record a one bar long um, drum pattern. And it's going to record my drums because I have it on group B. So I can just go ahead and all I have to do is press the restart button and everything will go ahead and record. Oh, I also have to press start. So let's go ahead, press start. Now it's waiting and I can press restart. 
and you can see as soon as it hits that one bar long endpoint, it's going to stop, the sample will show up, and then there it is, it's already on the pad. Um, say I wanted to do two bars, just change that over to two bars, um, start recording, now it's waiting, go ahead and restart. And just like before, now the sample is showing up. And there we go. I um, just want to show you what it sounds like if you record a different group. So I'll just change this over and then um, go ahead and do the same thing. So I'll just do one bar here, um, start recording, now it's waiting. And now you can hear that the guitars are now on this pad. And the really cool thing you can do with internal recording is actually record different parts of your project, say the drums and the sample, and then layer them in a live performance setting. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and play these at the same time. And just do something like that. Um, lots of options there, and if you want to get into that finger drumming and live performing scene, um, I'd really recommend using internal sampling to sort of uh, prepare your project for that setup. Now anyways, I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about for internal and external recording. Um, and like I said, the next video is going to cover editing these samples so um, we can make the ones that we recorded a little bit more usable and trim them down to what we want to work with. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below, and I will see you on the next part of the series.